It's another side that like wants to take more. It wants to go that one more round. Because like going that one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. You know what I mean? Welcome to another episode of One More Round, the Rocky Series podcast. I'm your host and with me today. I'm very excited, of course, to always have with me Katie and Kyle. We'll start with you, Kyle. How are you doing today? I'm okay. However, my coffee maker broke today. I flicked the switch and sparks came out of it, so I think it's done. I believe Polly would say it's busted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. So are you going to be okay mood-wise? You know, I went out to Tim Hortons and got a coffee. Okay. Whew. I'm good. Okay. And uh, Katie, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. A bit tired, but but doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm not tired. I had a headache. People love this kind of stuff on podcasts. I had a headache last two nights during my sleep. That's the worst when you have headaches during your sleep. And so I don't know why that is, but uh, I've taken my Tylenol this morning with my coffee and the headache's going away, but during your sleep is the worst. But anyways, I'm fine. I'm Excited to record with you guys. I don't know if we can really even announce this because I did put it on our socials that if you want to give your reviews via audio on your email, via I might even try to get this episode out early. Maybe it's what I'll do. I'll try to get this out early, but it takes so long to edit. But anyways, send us a voice email or just an email email or even join us live on Discord on March 12th. It'll be me and Kyle with a guest co-host, Dom. Now, Dom is a podcaster himself. Oh, we lost Katie. We'll just wait for her to come back. What happened? What happened to you, Katie? She was, I, she was, uh, I like, you were frozen, and... Now, every time Katie comes in and out, I can't see her anymore, so I have to come in and out so I can see her. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, like, I don't cheers. know what... It kind of, I'm not sure what the deal is, but I couldn't see either of you guys. Discord was acting funny this morning when I logged in, to be honest with you. So maybe there's something going on with Discord today in general. I'm blaming it on Discord for yeah. sure. It's not well, We haven't done anything different. <laughs> okay, guys, guys, I, I know what's happening. I, I've been watching too many adult films and the viruses have got on my computer and it's affected the Discord. This literally will go on forever, but Kyle, I can't see you now. You're spinning. Your box Christ. is just spinning. I know. Uh, well, <laughs> okay, I'm going to go in and out do one, one more time. time. But if it doesn't work, the good news is I can see and hear all you guys, and I'm doing the recording. Okay. And hey, we got a couple <laughs> new people to join our Discord. People are like, what the hell are these guys doing? <laughs> jumping in now? Yeah. Don't blame us. Blame the Discord. Yeah. So as long as you all can hear each other, I can see and hear you guys. Oh, I can see Kyle now. Okay. Yay. Okay. All right. So as long as I can hear and see you guys, no offense, I'm the one recording on my end. But as long as you guys can hear each other, that's the important thing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I could just restart this little part. That's fine. Eh, whatever. It's kind of fun little band. I'm sorry. Okay. No, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's, uh, it's the beauty of podcasting. So again... If you're somehow hearing this episode, somehow you're hearing this episode before March 12th, join our Discord. <laughs> yeah, our great Discord. Uh, join our Discord so you can actually come on the mic live. You can actually join us. Louise has already said he's going to do that. So Louise, for example, he's going to come on the mic live. And you won't be oh, there fine. the whole time, Louise. You're not going to be there the whole time. But we're going to invite people to come on and off to share their thoughts verbally and vocally and visually of Creed 3. So it's going to kind of be, it's just going to be a Cree 3 review show. So it's not going to be necessarily that long, but we're going to have a guest co-host. His name is Dom. He guest co-hosted with me on the uh, one more, uh, sorry, on the <laughs> the Long Road podcast, the Ramble Series podcast. He was the guest host on episode five of Ramble 3. I can say this now. I'm going to announce this here if anyone cares. So Dom is officially going to be my co-host of the uh, the Ramble franchise. He's going to finish the series with me. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's big um, news. Dom must have been good. He was he great. must have he been was, good on those episodes. He, well, he's great. He's funny. He laughs at all my jokes, so that's an automatic in. 
Um, <laughs> no. He's actually a really funny guy. He's from uh, uh, Long Island, Staten Island? Staten Island. Stat- is that a Staten Island, New York? Is that what's called? St- Staten Island is one of the five boroughs of New York City. There you go. Mm-hmm. So he's got that real New York accent. He's a great guy, very funny. He actually does like comedy bits on his YouTube channel. He has his own podcast called Movie Thoughts. Yeah, so check that out. It's called Movie Thoughts. He does great uh, great reviews. One man show. He's We've been social network friends for years because of our combined like of Sly. He's someone I've wanted to podcast with for a while, and he didn't know it, but when I invited him on as a guest co-host, my part of my brain was like, if this goes well, I'm going to make the invitation for him just to join me. With no pressure. Like I told him, no pressure. You can bow out at any time. No hard feelings. If you're like after five episodes of doing Ramble 3 or whatever, like I can't do this no more. I can't do this no more. If he if he has to bow out, he can just sign a billion year contract like Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he's got a billion year contract. Anyways, he's great. I'm really excited to have him on. So he's guest hosting Ramble Three, Episode Five. I do have another guest host for Episode Six because we already made the that appointment. But he's going to be kicking in come April. So as my permanent guest host. Uh, but it, anytime he can't make it due to his job, I'll have other guest hosts. But he's kind of the semi permanent. So I've really enjoyed having other creators and other guest hosts on. But it's become a bit of an exhausting process to kind of get a different one every episode. So yeah. Yeah, I, I bet I can imagine. So now well, that's the, exciting. Yeah, it's now it's more pull minute, pull minute. Okay, pull um, minute, pull minute. Ryan's in essence, Ryan's done hooking up, and now he wants to settle down. On oh, good analogy. I like that. Very good. Yeah, <laughs> it's too much work. Yeah, I bring that up regarding Dom because Dom will be with me and Kyle. He'll be guest hosting, filling in for Katie, who won't be here for that Cree 3 Spectacular review episode. But Katie, you're going to leave a voicemail, I presume, or you're going to send me a voice recording of your review? I will. And I saw it yesterday. I won't say anything now, but I'm just saying I did see it yesterday. Katie, are you on vacation? I can't remember. So during the pandemic, Sundays worked really awesome because I never went anywhere, but I'm just going to Breckenridge for a friend's birthday, just a mountain town, okay. like an hour from here. Of course. Just for the weekend. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We're and and to answer your question, Ryan, uh, no, I have not seen Creed yet, well, you but I will watch it. March 12th. Yes. Okay. Also, I just want to say, uh, yeah, so March 12th, that's the Creed 3, which will air March 19th on the podcast feeds. And Ruben and I are seeing the movie together on Tuesday of the time it's recording, and he has agreed to come on the mic, not with the show, but with my iPhone. He's going to voice his thoughts of the film. We'll do that together, and I'll insert that interaction between me and original co-host Ruben uh, into the uh, into that episode for March 19th. So it's going to be kind of a Cree 3 spectacular. We want to hear good reviews. We want to hear bad reviews. We want to hear the good and the bad. Whatever it is, guys, don't be afraid to share your feelings on the Cree 3 experience that you had via email, voice message, or whatever. So speaking of some of the Cree 3 drama, I'm going to read my email first because this did come from our faithful Donald, he's on our channel all the time when we record live. He's just not here today, funny enough. But he sent us an email before, as you know, Bob, the character that I created and we all talked about was Mike Kunda. It's all been resolved. Uh, Mike Kunda actually sent me a message saying that he heard my mini sewed and he appreciated it. And he said it was great and uh, he's very happy with it. And uh, it was nice of him to reach out, both to reach out to not defend his actions, but to explain his side of things, which he has every right to explain his side of the story uh, regarding uh, the behavior or the comments that were done on the Stallone zone and what he experienced regarding Sly. Again, if you haven't heard that whole drama, I guess just check out the previous three episodes of this uh, one more round. We get into it and it's at the beginning of each episode. If you don't want to hear the movie review stuff, I thought it was quite fun, quite good. Like I said, when Mike reached out to me the first time, I thought he was going to kill me, but we didn't say anything bad. The thing is we didn't say anything bad. Uh, like we kept it pretty diplomatic and we did say, I think a few times we are only sharing one side of the story. We invited people from the Stallone zone to share their side of the story. So Mike did do that. So we appreciate that. But this was from Donald and he did say something to our, show uh, regarding this whole before the resolve but i think it's important we talk about a couple things just from our fans from our show fans right people that enjoy our show he says dear ryan kyle and katie i haven't written in for a while since i usually make it to the live discord recordings but i felt the recent bob drama or mike kunda drama or the stallone zone drama really is what we should say i deserved an email after ryan got blocked on social media so yes it's true so (laughs) mike i know if i don't think he's listening but it's true he did block he, he he did block the rocky account my podcast account on instagram 
from his his uh, Yo film Yo Rocky film tour account. He reached out to me just for full disclosure. He reached out to me via the same account, his Yo film film account, to my Ryan account, my personal account. So he did, he didn't block me on Instagram on my personal account, but he did block the this one the the Rocky podcast account. Okay, so that's what Donald's referring to. When the Stallone Zone drama first happened, I gave Bob a break, or you know, Mike Kunda a break about it. We all lose our temper sometimes, and fanboys of any kind are an especially passionate bunch. Well, he just wanted to say that people who alienate other people, it's not good for people like me, Ryan, he said. He says it's just sad. So he's supporting me, and I appreciate that, Donald. He's just, And I get it. Again, I just want to say it was, it was the podcast account, not my personal account, that he blocked me on. He brings up a good point here. He said when Kevin Smith, the director and writer Kevin Smith, was criticized by some fans of overly praising Marvel films, Smith calmly explained that he only wants to discuss the things he likes on his own podcast. This is the stance I think the Stallone's own form should have taken on Creed 3. Quote, for example, Sly's not in it, so good. Bad or ugly, we won't discuss it here, moving on. So they could have just said that, like, you know, this is Stallone's own forum. Sly's not in Creed 3, we're moving on. Donald brings up some very good points here. He goes, Sly might regret the Creed films now. But am I supposed to hate that Sly won an award for Creed now? Like he won a Golden Globe, remember? And Sly mm-hmm. seemed very happy to win that award. So he won an award <laughs> for yeah, he won a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor for the first Creed film. So Donald's asking, is he supposed to hate that victory? Am I supposed to trash Sly's writing on Creed two in order to somehow qualify as a so called real fan? Because again, Sly regrets doing those films, apparently. That's what Sly has said, apparently, that he regrets doing the Creed films. So now we as fans, are we supposed to, because to support Sly as fans, are we supposed to say, yeah, I hate that you got that Golden Globe and did an amazing acting job. Or I, I hate your Creed 2 writing and the Dragos and their storyline was amazing, but I hate it now. He goes, the whole thing, like Kyle has said, the whole thing is oxymoronic or maybe just moronic, says Donald. <laughs> and I'll, he closes with this. I've always liked Ryan's honesty. Thank you, Donald. He has never blindly followed Sly's opinions, nor the majority opinion of the general public. Sometimes even to his own detriment. I remember when Ryan got blocked for not liking the first Creed film. Now he's blocked for saying Creed 3 might not be awful. As Adrian said, you can't win! So he goes on to say, uh, may everyone at one more round keep being kind and unbiased. Internet toxicity is too rampant as it is. We don't need Rocky fans dividing to Donald. So I thought that was a good email. Yeah. It's not how much you block. It's how much you get blocked moving forward. <laughs> how much can you get blocked and keep moving forward? Well, that's me. I keep getting blocked, but I keep moving forward. And I want to say this, too, because I know Greg, the first, never listens to our show no more. That's one guy who, who hated my takes, he, our takes, but he specifically hated Look, I get it. If you don't like listening to somebody talk, you, you stop listening. But that was just one take of our Michael B. fandom. Was, you know, We were really hard on Michael B. and his acting. We're not alone in that, but we were hard on it. But we moved on, and now we talk about the Rocky films. And he might be missing some great stuff now. But I get it. I have been honest with my opinions, of course. I don't placate the audience, and I don't, and I don't placate mm-hmm. the celebrities. I'm always trying to be true to myself. To thine own self be true. If you try to please everyone, you end up pleasing no one. Or it just ends up being really mediocre. Almost you like know, a morning choosing- news radio show. Those mm-hmm. comments in the morning, like they don't. It's never a hot take or stance. It's just, yeah. It's blocked. I'm going to step out for a second, okay? okay no worries. I'll be right back. So, yeah, just uh, keep uh, go ahead and read uh, now your email from one of our longtime listeners. This is a great one. Yes. So this is from Rob, and the subject line is first email big fan. He says, well, this has been a long time coming, and I apologize in advance if this email may be a bit long. I first stumbled upon your podcast a few years back. Well, originally I thought it was the Sylvester Stallone Podcast Network and not all the rest that you guys do together. I've been a Stallone fan my whole life. It was even my nickname in high school because everyone everyone knew I was his biggest fan growing up and really idolized him. Not just his movies, but his whole life as an underdog was really was really identifiable with me. Plus, on top of that, my dad is a dead ringer for Sly himself. I'll post a picture below. That is super cool. Um, the picture did not come through, so I thought it came through. My, I, I think I, when I forwarded you the email, I didn't forward with the attachments. My apologies, but I'll post those pictures on the YouTube video. So if you're listening to this on iTunes, come check out our YouTube page. One more round, the Rocky Series podcast. You'll see his photo. It's a pretty good. It's a pretty good picture of his dad. It's very sly looking for sure. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. 
Uh, So Rob goes on to say, it was only until last year, roughly August 2022, when I started listening to Going the Distance with Ryan and Ruben. I was six months into my marriage and I had let myself go a bit. I stopped going to the gym. I got a bit lazy. I was working as a manager in a supermarket chain here in Melbourne, Australia, a job I truly disliked for many years. That's when I turned Rocky on for the hundredth time, but for many years, and introduced it to my newlywed wife. It had the same impact on me like when I was a child. And soon I felt absolutely inspired to make the changes I needed in my life. I started going for walks that turned into runs. I put down the custard buns and started eating tuna and rice. Boring. <laughs> Just kidding. Good for you. He says, I started to look started to look for another job to fulfill my happiness with a career that I wanted and just in general started to be a healthy and active person again. That's when I landed a job that I'm truly blessed to have, something I've been doing since I started listening to Going the Distance last year. I became a carer for kids with disabilities and is the hands-down most rewarding and heartwarming job I think I could have found. Bless his heart. I love it. Yeah, he says, I love it, and I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Hmm. Listening to Going the Distance on my way to and from work has been an amazing discovery and fills my countless commute hours with complete rocky gold. From Ryan's fantastic and insightful interviews to Kyle's knowledge and wit, and of course, Katie's beauty and female touch, I'm hooked. Anyway, since I live in a country where we are so far away from anything Rocky related, I thought I'd share just a little brush I had with someone involved in the series and another childhood hero of mine. About 10 years ago, when I was still a fresh-faced 20-year-old, now I'm pushing 30 myself, at a pop culture event that hosts annually in Melbourne, it was announced they were going to have Dolph Lundgren as a special guest. I couldn't believe my eyes. Could I really meet Ivan Drago? I just had to go. I took two of my best friends, and we caught the train to Melbourne showgrounds where the show was being held. I didn't care for any other actor or character that was going to be there. I just had to meet Dolph. Sure. Yeah. So I got my ticket and marched to the city. I also saw Christopher Lloyd out in the back puffing on a cigarette, which I found hilarious. <laughs> Good tidbit. Rob goes on to say, I waited in the in line at the back, and one by one, as everyone got out there a few seconds with Dolph, he was within reach. There he was, Ivan Drago, mm. the man that killed Apollo Creed. He was a tad shorter than I thought he'd be, but still stood well over six feet, but still in incredible shape. I approached him and shook his hand and told him, I must break you. He squeezed down on my hand and told me, that's pretty good. I shook his hand once more as they snapped the picture. He gave me a slight jab on the shoulder on the way out, and I was starstruck. Wow. Wow, It was just incredible. Dude, that's freaking awesome. I love when celebrities lean into their what made them sort of famous. They don't like, oh, yeah, shut up with that. I hear that all the time. Like, I would know. He probably has heard that a thousand times, but you're right. Yeah, he was... A stand-up guy about it. So Rob goes on to say, I left the line with my with stars in my eyes and immediately went over to the wall where they printed the photos out, which I've attached below. So you'll share that yeah, too, I'll right? That, yeah. We then heard that Dolph was signing autographs in a few hours' time, and I just had to get that too. I once again waited in line to meet him to get his signature on my Rocky Four movie poster. This is the other great part to the story. As we were lining up, there was an extremely attractive girl in front of me wearing some pretty revealing clothes. Mm. Dolph was rocking back in his chair and staring at her behind, Mm. as was I. And we both caught each other staring at her. And Dolph Dolph gave me a wink as if to say, (laughs) as if to say, damn, she's fine. When I approached him for his autograph, he laughed because he knew I caught him checking out this girl, and I told him, I must break her. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh boy. Busted. Busted. <laughs> he, he laughed and signed my poster, and boy, I had the day of my life. Wow. Sorry again for the long email. I tried to cut this down as much as I could, but I couldn't help myself getting it out. Thanks for all the shows and podcasts you guys do. Much love. Your big friend from the land down under, Rob Sky Sale. I apologize, Rob. I don't know if it's Sale or Sale. Both sound good to me, yeah. How um, do you spell it? S-A-L-E-H. Yeah. Sale. Anyway, Sala. that's an amazing experience. And I'm super jealous because I like me some Dolph. And I think it's hilarious that he was totally like... I Checking a, a Louis, girl yeah. out. Louise just said, what a story. All men speak that universal language. <laughs> Great email, Rob. Thank you so much. He goes by Sky, I think. Was that his uh, nickname, Sky? 
Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I think all of his socials like on Twitter and stuff. So he reached out to me because he sent out the email to the go in the distance email and I didn't respond to it. And then he sent it, then he resent it to the new one more round email. Again, if you want to send us an email, folks, just like Rob does or did, send us an email. We want to hear from you guys. You can also send voicemails too if you want. If you do send a voicemail, I should say this. If you send a voice file to the email, I'll play it on the air. We'll play it. Okay. Do you um, have- want to hear some accents and shit? There's listeners from all over, and I, I love an accent. I do. I'm a sucker yeah, so for it. He's from Australia? Rob? There? Yeah. Yeah, his English was really yeah. good. Good job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ryan, um, on that on that note, do you have any, like, file requirements that people should know about? Like, does it have to be, like, an MP something or other? Well, as long as I can play it, I can hear it. It doesn't really matter. But MP3, if you send it via MP3, but it doesn't matter. If, if the file gets to the email... And I can hear it, then I can play it. It's a mm-hmm. big deal. Yeah. If you have an iPhone or smartphone, any kind of smartphone nowadays, just literally the free apps on your app store is just literally voice recorder. Done. And you just hit play, saves it as a file, and then usually most of them have like email file, right? And it's it's mm-hmm. really easy and straightforward. So it's very easy, folks, free to do. Send us a voicemail and I'll play it on air and people get to hear your voice. You get to be on a nationally renowned podcast who's uh, cause waves with other podcasters. Okay. All right. Well, that's awesome emails. Awesome fandom. Again, join the Patreon. We want to thank you to Baz. Baz is a new Patreon member. Thank you, Baz, for your support. He's actually here on our Discord. And again, if you want to watch us live on Discord, join our Discord. It's free, and you get to be with us live and tell jokes like Louise does. Okay. Well, I had a dream about you guys last night. I forgot. I just remembered this now. Oh, please. I had a dream that I got up at like 3 in the morning or something like that. For some reason, you two are together in my basement podcasting. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, did I, did I miss the podcast? And you're like, no, we have our own podcast that we do oh. without you. Oh. And, <laughs> but I wasn't offended in the podcast. So I'm like, oh, okay. That, does that mean I can go back to bed now? And like, yes. And I'm like, okay, that sounds good. I'll <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Uh, dreams are Anyways, weird. Dreams are funny. Uh, <laughs> hey, are we going to do trivia? Oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. And, all right, here we are. 41, true or false? Polly is talking to Rocky. So Polly is talking to Rocky when he is punching the heavy bag with his right hand. What? So he, doesn't he have a hand tied to be a certain type of boxer? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. If he Rocky wants to learn to be a right-handed boxer, so he has to jab with the left, power with the right. So he jabs so with for- the left. I'm right-handed, so I would jab with my left, power with my right. What <laughs> is the name of the doctor that tells Rocky and Polly what happened to Adrian? Holy smokes! You know, it's funny because I even made note of it when I watched it, but I can't remember it now. Is it um, with OBGYN? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, shit. So the name of the doctor. Okay. What does Mickey yell after Adrian says, win to Rocky? Okay. Yeah, that one I know. True or false, Mickey says, get that olive oil out of you. <laughs> okay. And lastly, what does Rocky call the street singers? What does he refer to them as? Ooh, tough questions for the last. Those are tough questions. Yeah, and I really have sliding down, uh, I downhill. Too. I think I'm. I, I think I got three out of five. I right hand versus left hand, and it's a true or false. Just to tell you, not to spoil the answer. I think for forty one, it's not an issue of right hand, left hand. Yeah, who's holding the bag? Essentially, is the Paulie is talking to Rocky when he is punching the heavy bag. Or talking to, I guess nobody's. See, I'm thinking the bag. of the first movie. Yes, remember when Paulie yeah. comes in and says, uh, "Hey." Uh, I got a proposition for you. And then he holds the yeah, yeah. Rocky. But there's a scene in Rocky 2 where I think yeah. Paulie talks to Rocky in the gym when he's with Mickey, saying, you know, something about your sister. I don't think so. So there's a scene where Rocky punching the bag with one hand and he's talking to Mickey, not Paulie. I think the false part of that question is Rocky's talking to Paulie when question. it should be Rocky talking swear- to Mickey. Polly still came into the gym though, so all three of them there are in a scene together. Thing, but I think Rocco is referring to one arm is like tied down. His left arm is tied down, okay, so that he I still just have has an to... answer. I'm still going to give an answer, whether whether I got the scene right or wrong. I'm still going to guess left or right. I mean, true or false. Because Mickey, because Rocky's like, Mick, can I use my other arm? Yeah, and he's like, if you do that, I'm going to chop it off. Cut. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. yeah. My <laughs> cut it off. Way, I have an answer of true or false, regardless. <laughs> it's 50 50, regardless of whether I got the right. And then the second one is the doctor's name, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting that one. I just want a question mark because I'm like, I'm not guessing that. Okay. Anyway, All right. So let's move into the film. So, as we just left off, of course, we just had the scene where Apollo's talking to his management, says, hey, whatever gets him in the ring, 
The next scene is, oh yeah, I want to say, so I went, I've been having fun with ChatGPT. I don't know if you guys have used that for fun. It's just kind of a fun thing to use every now and then. Have you guys no, used it yet? No, it's like the fastest growing app in the world though. So I tend to be, I tend to dislike pe- things that are like overly popular. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, so you yeah. Do a film, you, so you do a, <laughs> a, a film podcast on the Rocky films. Great. Uh, no, you know what I mean. Like something that's uh, like all here. the, yeah, Donald's all the rage. Yeah, Donald, yes, we, read your, so. we read your email, Donald. You have to listen to it on the show when it comes out. Um, chat, whatever it is, it's fun. I think it's fun, and I, I got it. I get a kick out of it because I just like to see what it can do. It's pretty amazing what it can do. For example, I don't know if you ever saw when I posted on our social site where I said I had the program write the Rocky and Rambo films in a haiku. Mm-hmm. So it does that for you right away, and it does it. It's amazing how quickly it you know falls all the rules of a haiku, takes the plot, and writes a Rocky haiku it wasn't good though yeah it, it can't be creative is what i'm getting at you'll be surprised to some degree to some degree you'll be surprised but you know it's not a flaw. Oh, i've seen some creative shit that yeah. they've done not with that but it's a combination of what you tell it so the more yeah you it just is so I, then I using doing, data that has been right. input. Okay, mm-hmm. What I'm getting at, it's fun to use. I Sorry. recommend. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I don't, I'm going down five different rabbit holes. What I'm getting at, it's it is kind of fun to use. I've been doing a lot of Rocky stuff with. So I did like do a Rocky episode, a Rocky themed episode based in Seinfeld sitcom, and it pops it out right away. So it's it, but it's not flawless, but it gives you some ideas of how you would do things. So today I said, give me ten very difficult. Trivia questions based on Rocky, the Rocky films. But the, the problem with the AI, it does gather kind of what's, it, it, it doesn't know that it's like, it can't say to itself, uh, yeah, they're going to get there, but like it hasn't watched the Rocky film. So right. F- like this AI, it just knows what's on the internet regarding the Rocky film. It crawls. So it yeah. kind of creates this weird Frankenstein of stuff. So one thing is, you know, what's the name of the box? What's the name of the boxer in Rocky IV that Rocky defeats? Okay. Uh, what was another one. The AI said, "What's the name of Adrian's restaurant that she works at?" And oh. it said restaurant because Adrian's restaurant, but she works at a pet shop. But it still gave the pet shop name. Mm-hmm. But it asked the question, "What's the name of Adrian's restaurant?" So it's it takes these, mm-hmm. so it kind of Frankenstein's incorrect information, but gives you the right answer. But the one that it gave, I was like, "This is weird that the AI did this." And I thought, "This is true." The one that it gave was, "What is Rocky's number or locker number?" And it gave a number, and I'm like, no, is this what it is? It, so it is gave, it a single digit? No, is it a single digit number? Okay, it's a year. Do you want to guess the year that Rocky's locker number is, according to the AI? Which I think it's fascinating that the AI came up with this, but it's incorrect. Oh, you checked it and yeah. it's wrong. I checked the scene. And I couldn't see a locker number anywhere. There's no locker numbers on the lockers that I could see in the first film. It's 1776, according to AI, because that's the bicentennial. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of funny how I don't know, I find that kind of funny how you're dealing with something very smart and very quick, but it also can be very wrong. Where there's still that human factor that has to kind of check. I don't know if I would classify it as smart because it's there's a lot of nonsense on the internet and it's just pulling from you know, like you're you said very stuff. intricate questions. These are very detailed questions. But yesterday I did explain quantum physics to me like I'm 10 years old. Like what it is is basically Google. But it can basically mold its answers in a more user-friendly way. So if I Google quantum physics, you'll get 100 different sites. Which mm-hmm. one do I click on? Look, I just want quantum physics to explain to me in less than 500 words. And you can say, like, explain to me quantum physics in under 500 words like I'm 10 years old. And it does an amazing job, breaks it down, tells you. So that's what it's really good at. It's just like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you suggesting that Rocco used chat? GPT for no. his trivia book. <laughs> I know you're not. I was no, just I'm suggesting that the AI is like a 10 year old boy sometimes. Yeah. Mm, okay. mm-hmm. All right. Let's get into the movie. So, this is where we are now. Rocket Trivia is asked. Thank you for reminding me again. So, Rocky's going up to the mix jam. He's all happy to start working. This is his first day on the job, I guess. This is the first day. That's the next day, right? Presumably, yeah. Uh... Is this his first day at work? Apollo's had the meeting. So the, the time, as we know, time and space aren't really recognized in the Rocky franchise. Because are we led to believe this meeting with Apollo and his management was just the day before? Because they have gotten the word out fast to start teasing and harassing yeah, Rocky. They got the cartoon into the newspapers under deadline at midnight that night before or something. That's probably hey, what had to have happened. Do you have enough cash? 
you can make that happen. So. Also, I, I have a new theory about how the Rocky universe works with time and space, like Please. you said. Yeah. And, and your comments about quantum physics inspired that. I understand the premise of quantum physics, especially, is on like a subatomic level. The laws of physics do not work the same way you would just visually see things. Things can exist and not exist. Things can be a wave and a particle. Right. I think you could work some kind of basically the Rocky universe follows like these quantum type of rules where Rocky could exist in 1976 and 1979 simultaneously. That's going to be my new theory. It's it's quantum Rocky, what we'll call it. So Sly's playing uh, chess with his script, and we're playing checkers. Yeah, like he's whole exactly. All right. Exactly. We were shitting on him for years, but it turns out <laughs> he had the upper hand all along. Let's just go back a little bit that is sort of based in reality. I'm going to stick with if we could go back in time and edit these films, even if it just says two weeks later or some sort of dialogue like yeah. Mickey, Mickey meets Rocky as he walks in. Hey, Rocky, you've been working here for a few weeks now. How you doing with it all? Oh, Rick, it's okay. You know, I like to be around it. And then he walks in and you know, some sort of like indication time has passed. Because already, like Kyle was saying, and Katie, you're saying that the picture is in the paper. We've already got the Italian chicken or whatever they call it. The Stallion chicken. What do they call We'll find it. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's Stallion wrong. Chicken. It is wrong. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. But they're looking at the papers. they got a group of boxers all looking at the paper. Rocky w- walks in, wonders why they're giving him the stink eye. He kind of shrugs it off, keeps walking. And then people are look, People are staring him down as he's walking in. And why are they so angry at him? Are these guys on Apollo's payroll to be angry at Sly? Or is that all it takes for them to turn on Sly? Oh, sorry, Sly. Okay. The turn on Rocky is a stupid f- picture. You know, get, which one is it? Like, it's just a picture, but now they're uh, angry. I at have him. a theory, and it's about sports in general. I find sports fascinating. F- sports fandom. Specifically, why people are so into sports. Sports is so important to so many people, yeah. especially in America. America, sports is like a religion. It is, um, for sure, yeah. But, like, Canada, for example, where I live, hockey is huge, and like NHL hockey is massive. Mm-hmm. And even I am not a big sports guy. I follow my, my local team. I don't watch all the games, but I follow it. And for a lot of people, we're kind of tribal in a certain sense that we pick people to represent us. Mm-hmm. And often it's like, you'll, you'll be a fan of the sports franchise in your own city, even if they're really not the best, right? But they represent you. or you, And you live kind of vicariously through them in a way. They're doing something you really can't. Like, they're playing at a level you can't play at. Rocky fought at a level that none of these guys will ever fight at or ever have a hope of fighting at. And so these people, in a, I think in a sense, Rocky represents them. And they live, in a sense, vicariously through him. Someone from their gym, from their neighborhood, fought at the high level and did amazing. And so he temporarily garnered a lot of respect for that. And now he's going the other way. And so this person who's representing them, who they cheer for, is now a chicken. So it's almost like they're being attacked personally, even though it's Rocky being attacked. I think we'll have to go with that just to expand on that. They don't know the other side of the story. They don't know that what's going on personally with Rocky, that he's not actually a chicken. He's not trying to duck this guy, blah, blah, blah. They don't know that. But additionally, it is a super lame insult. I do find it a little hard to believe that they all of a sudden. Yeah, 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 for sure. Mm -hmm. Because do none of these guys have any kind of like relationship with rock at all like he's in the gym he's trained there he's been there for six years or now you know none of these guys have any kind of friendship with rocky like rocky seemed to have casual acquaintances with people like he'd say hey how's it going to people he never hung out with anyone other than Polly. this is weird that we have all these films and his ability to have outside of his sitcom relationships but you know how in sitcoms they always have the same friends Mm-hmm. And it's just weird how we don't see any kind of, like, we're led to believe he's a man of the people, but we never see anyone, he's always kind of hated, maybe he's not a likable person, I don't know. It's, well, he well, plays with the neighborhood kids. I mean, it, we're a little, again, we have to just go with some job. of these things. But yeah, like, he plays with all the neighborhood kids, he knows everybody's name, like, he knew Little Marie, oh, does your brother know you're here? Right. Like, all, yeah. He has acquaintances, right? Some people just don't. He's a loner. There are some people that, especially if you're more introverted, you'll only have a couple close friends. 
That's also a thing with age have. too, right? Like yeah. you're, you're more choosy with your time. And so you only can allocate time to people who you truly time. care about. And Rocky said in the first film, like who cared? Like when, when Paulie wanted right. to work in Rocky's corner, he's like, who cared about me before? No one. Now maybe he's being a little hyperbolic there, mm-hmm. but yeah, these people didn't care about him before. The only reason people cared about him afterwards is because he nearly beat the champion of the world. Like he, he did this amazing feat. And then he's not willing to repeat it, and now he's being called a coward. So they they turn they turn on him quick because there was no relationship there in the first place. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, do. I it, it's always bothered me this scene too, Ryan. Like I'm like, oh my god, like this this was pretty it's a quick. quick. Turn. Like they, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very so. school. Like they're like they're acting like they're ten years old. Like not. But one it's of not these guys, a not one person says, "Rock, you you went toe to toe with the champ, dude. Forget these bums. You know nobody said forget yeah. these bums, Tim. They're all in on. So it's either they're mm-hmm. all paid because we'll see later. There's a scene later when Rocky comes out with Adrian. You know they cat call him and stuff, or get you know. And I'm like, are they paid by Apollo or are they really acting on their own? <laughs> I think paid by Apollo is uh, conspiracy theory territory here. Agreed. Well, he says whatever gets him in the ring. No, it's just, I think I we're know. just shown, like, this is, ha- these people kind of suck. Rocky's life sucks because these people that he's been around in the gym for six years turned on him so quickly. I've heard that about Philadelphia people. They're, uh, <laughs> they're brutal. <laughs> Isn't it Fick- a fickle bunch. Philly sports fans in particular are known for being pretty harsh. Okay. I like this one guy who's sleeping here. With his head down there. <laughs> These guys have to get to work. Like, they're here at the gym. I know you gotta take breaks and shit, but still. Hey, what's up? Hey. What? Who's your heart? Who's talking about? You heard me? What was it? There was another boxer there. He's the one that spits in the bucket later. It's the same guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you think of anything tougher, this, tougher than saying an oops? So that's the same guy who says, Hey, as Rocky walks by, where's your heart? Here we have a full page ad, I guess. In the what it looks like a school printout. This is supposed to be the Philadelphia Express or what? Are, what is this newspaper? So it says Apollo Creed versus the stall. That's right, the stallion chicken. Can someone explain this insult, please? Should be the Italian chicken. Yes, uh, because you just have to replace okay, the so animal. Was- Keep the Italian because that's what he yeah. is, and replace the animal. Replace the animal because a stallion is a strong, majestic, beautiful beast of a creature. Now you just have a hybrid of a chicken and a horse, which is still pretty scary. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Okay, I agree. I agree that the stallion chicken is a stupid phrase and shouldn't be there. Now, you recall later in the film where it was either Bill Baldwin or Stu Nahan said, I've never seen so many Italians in one place in my life. And the other one was like, you said that, not me, backing off. That sets the precedent at this time. There's at least some social awareness that you can't shit on Italians. I know it's the 70s. I think whoever did this in Apollo's PR team, while they wanted Apollo to be the bad guy in the sense that he's calling out Rocky, I think some guys like, maybe we shouldn't shit on Italians here. So instead of the Italian chicken, I'm going to just do the stallion chicken, which is arguably lamer, but more politically correct. It'd be interesting argument that they're trying to be politically correct, even though Apollo specifically said whatever gets him in the ring. And secondly, though, here's the thing: Dom, my future co-host for the Ramble podcast, he'll be uh, Kyle. You'll be meeting him in a week. He's Italian, and I asked him about this Italian "quote unquote" insult, and he goes, "He does as an Italian, he doesn't understand it." I get it, but whoever wrote the film, Slot. whoever wrote the film. That Italian. in their mind when they yeah. when they did the Bill Baldwin Stu Nahan thing he had it's like I've never seen it. so many Italians in one place in my life. There's nothing that bad about that, right? So we need it's not like you said anything really offensive. So that was in the mind of the writer of Sly. Mm-hmm. It stands to reason it was in his mind when this came up, too. At this time, there was something, like, people would use that as, like, a derogatory term. Because even Mickey does it. Mickey says, like, the olive oil comment and your tomato and you dumb dago. Yeah. So so there is some of that. And even in the 80s, I'm going to bring up one of my favorite TV shows ever, The Golden Girls, which was in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Even then, like, oh, uh, I remember Blanche saying something like, oh, that's all you Italians do. Like, she's using mm. it as a... So I do think there was some sort of I guess there was. sentiment yeah. 
around that. Now, Kyle's really stretching to explain that, that it was like a PC attempt. I think what's more likely is it was just a mis- it was dumb. It was a mistake. There are so many mistakes in these movies. That- <laughs> so you're going with mistake and, you, and Kyle's. Yeah. And it's, I hear Kyle's argument and I, you bring up a good point because Sly wrote the script, of course, and he is Italian. So you're right. As the author, he must have felt something maybe from his childhood or something to feel this way at the age of what he was, 32 at this time, 33. So something was in his psyche to write it this way because he would have written this film. He directed the film and edited the film. So this is Sly. Sly is making these choices. So we say it's Apollo's team in the film, but Sly is behind the camera doing this. That's the question we'd have to ask Sly. Why did you substitute the Italian? Why did you take out the Italian? But Louise... Louise did bring up, <laughs> Louise goes, if someone calls me a stallion chicken, we're immediately engaging in fisticuffs. So <laughs> <laughs> Donald goes on to say that stallion chicken is Rocky's baby creed. <laughs> so <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so now we get to watch Rocky, his reaction to this. So Rocky kind of shrugs it off, but then he goes in the bathroom, has a different feeling. Good drawing, by the way. Good character. Drawing. It's kind of funny, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the guy. It's kind of funny, don't you think? And he's trying to laugh it off. And now he's not smiling. Oh, he's, he's, he's in the bathroom alone. He throws it on the floor. There's a waste bin right there. That drives me nuts. It's right yeah, there. he's bouncing the ball on the nasty bathroom floor. And he'll have to probably clean that anyway. Look at the toilet seat here. Look at the toilet seat, guys. He's legit. The, look at the stain in the front there. What? You got some stains in the front. You got stains around the really? toilet. Really? It looks pretty. For that bathroom, that toilet looks pretty good. If that's your home toilet, no, that'd be gross. But for a, a public yeah. gym bathroom that looks like that, I'd take a shit there if I had to. Is it Mike or, or his twin brother, Jimmy? Which one do you think cleans the toilets? Actually, Rocky does now, probably. Oh, true. Good point. So maybe that's why that looks half decent. Maybe that's why he's, yeah. he trusts the floor. He cleaned it yesterday. Yeah. Could be. It's funny. Rocky's kind of doesn't know how to process some of these emotions, I think, because it reminds me of the first film after the press conference. And Rocky's like, remember how I said those things didn't bother me? They did. He's doing the same thing here. Where he's like, oh, it's kind of funny, isn't it? He's almost kind of in denial or trying to tell himself that it's kind of funny, but sure, inside, like man, like this isn't going to get yeah. me. Who does he think wrote that? Like, that's a well, really he, good question, Ryan. They don't know, I guess. Who's the author? Where's this coming from? Yeah. Where's the? Is it? It's a full page ad. It seems like, but it doesn't even say from the team of Apollo or anything like. For all he knows, it could be some boxing critic or some mm-hmm. sports critic who's calling Rocky a chicken for not fighting a Paul. Like, there's no indication that he should know who it's from. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I think Rocky might not know, but you have to pay a lot of money to put a full page ad in. Who would do that other than Apollo? A sports writer is not going to pay for a full page ad. It might he might be in like the sports column where he calls out Rocky and says you're a chicken, but like. Who does full page ads like that if it's not someone who would benefit from yeah, Rocky being I in know. the ring again? I think the bigger question here is he's not even been asked to do it. He hasn't actually been ducking. Like Apollo has not even said, yeah, hey. He was challenged in the hospital. You, anytime, anywhere. Do you know what I mean? I it's know, been I six know. months. As we learn, it's been six months. He's He's been hanging around doing nothing for six months. It does seem like an extreme measure to all of a sudden call him out like in a, du- like a dick way. His- team on the film now maybe behind the scenes it's been done but on the film screen we have not seen apollo's team reach out to rocky or mickey at all mm-hmm. so yeah the invitation that's true they should have done that why don't why not call first maybe rocky's exactly to Nobody's reached- yeah, right we the viewers yeah. know what's happened we're led to believe that this somehow apollo's management has been watching the same film we're watching so they know the behind the scenes <laughs> drama but you're absolutely yeah. right there's been no hey this is a Paul's management, Mickey. Is Rocky for Ah, he's retired. He's blind as a beagle. Uh, yeah. I never thought of that, but that's true. You should uh, you should at least ask first before you call someone a chicken. Yeah, so we, the viewer, exactly. know what, knows what's going on. But yeah, the left and right hands don't know what's happening here. But yeah. I have a question. Hey, hey, Do you think there on. is a woman's bathroom in there? No. <laughs> it's really just one bathroom. 
Does Mickey have his own bathroom <laughs> in his upstairs apartment? Do you think he must? Yeah, yeah. like he's yeah. if he has to take a shit, he's doing it in peace upstairs. Like he's not going to be like next to someone. <laughs> The visual of Vicky on the crapper. Sorry, <laughs> I've been on this toy for seventy six years, and uh, <laughs> he probably does number one downstairs and number two upstairs. Is my guess. You guys put a lot of thought into bowel movements. That's what men do. That's what we do. Okay, we spend a lot of time in there. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a common complaint of women that men yeah, spend well, a lot of time because in you never poo. You don't understand what, what us men have to go through. I know. We just pee and we squat over so we don't have to touch anything. <laughs> okay, so uh, Mickey is talking and goes, "Hey, hey, Chico, listen, hey, listen." So he's talking. So this guy who's bouncing around the ring, just so you know, a better podcaster I would know the name, but the guy is—he's a real boxer. Roberto Duran. Is that his name? Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. I can't Roberto see him Duran's here. Roberto a very well-known... Yeah. He is yeah. in Rocky II. He is a sparring partner for Rocky later in the movie, so I don't know if he's that's him this here. person. I... He's oh, cool. The... Yeah, he's the one that's running around. I think they did a movie on him. That we they did. Watch. I saw it's good. The Stone? I've seen or it. Stone or The Stone or... No, it's called Duran or something. Oh. I want to say. At the time I saw it, a few years ago, it was on Amazon Prime, and it is good. We'll have to see if it's him here, but he's a, he's Rocky's sparring partner it is him. later. It is him. And he's legit, like Kyle said. Uh, another documentary, Chuck. The It's the Chuck Wepner story. Okay. Actually, it's not a documentary. I'm sorry. It's a movie, and it's good because my boy Liv Schreiber's in it. Yep. Shout out to Ray Donovan. His half-brother in Ray Donovan, the actor's name is Pooch Hall, plays Muhammad Ali in... Chuck. I learned watching that movie. I would recommend if people haven't seen it to watch it. It's, it's pretty good. But I learned that, according to this movie anyway, that Chuck had an opportunity to be in Rocky II as a sparring partner. But he effed it up. Big shocker. Yes. I, yeah, I heard about that as well. And the movie is called Hands of Stone. Okay, well, maybe I'm thinking of something else. I thought there was something called Duran. There might be two know. films. There might be two okay. films. But I knew it has stone in it. So there is a film okay. called Hands of Stone. It came out in 2016 uh, about Ro- Roberto Duran, who's, yes, yeah, what a great life and art, art life. So we've got the real life boxer here in the Rocky II film. And, and he had a biopic called Hands of Stone. And it starred Edgar. Ramirez, who plays Ro- Roberto Duran, Usher's in it as well, and Robert De Niro. That's right. I knew there was a big actor in it. Oh, there might be a... So that sounds like it's an actual movie. Yeah, this is a I movie, saw, movie, movie. You saw a, okay, a documentary. A documentary, all, yeah. Oh, cool. cool. Okay. okay. So there's a film cool. film, and there's a documentary. Cool. That's even greater. Okay, cool. See, after we do the Rocky films, I actually thought a way to kind of end our show before we move on to whatever the projects we move on, it'd be kind of fun to kind of just do one episode reviews of certain boxing movies that have stuff like this, like Hands of Stone, South Paul, Raging Bull, kind of just like... Oh, good, yeah. Like, they're quote-unquote bonus films, but then it advertises the podcast, too, and there's people who will stumble on it, you know, and say, hey, you know, we've retired, we're retired, Rocky, but we could talk about all the other films that have kind of been boxing films out there that we could talk about, yeah. Good point. I One of the trailers I saw yesterday was a George Foreman one. Yep. It doesn't actually look that good though that but, we, I don't that, think. but that we still review it and it'd be fun to review yeah it. yeah yeah okay all right kyle's like oh boy okay um <sighs> yeah <laughs> i still haven't seen raging bull i know it's crazy what i know I, ryan i know is that weird i have a hot take on that movie but maybe save i'll it, save it for our bonus episodes yeah. okay yeah okay so mickey's talking to uh roberto duran who i think he's called speedy in this film or something like that listen hey hey listen. what's with a grin How'd you get oh, so happy not. with yourself? Let me tell you something. Yeah. Snarl more, you see. Now, a good snarl. The guy in the red shorts, you, you mean? Yeah, we'll get back. A psychological well, way. Because you, you snarl and you punch yourself. Wait a minute. Hey, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking too. You're right. The sequence with Rocky, that's right. He's training with Mickey, and he's like, if you can catch this guy, you can catch That's right. Sorry, that was Robert. It's coming up later. Okay, so this guy is Roberto Duran here? No, it's later no. in the film. My my oh. brain went to later in the film. My apologies. Oh. You're right. Rocky sparring part. The guy's going fast around the ring. That's right. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we got this part here where Rocky's you know holding a bag for another boxer. He's in his. I love how he's changed into his work clothes from his uh, Eye of the Tiger jacket and stuff. Now he's wearing his Rocky work clothes. He just and- took his jacket off. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I think he's, I think that's all he did. <laughs> he doesn't want to get any blood or sweat on his eye of the tiger jacket. I wouldn't either. It's probably a hot, hot in there. Oh, it's yeah. probably hot in that jar in there because of all I the body. Is it hot in there? Because 
Mickey's wearing his toque. <laughs> I think he wears that hat no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. No matter what. That's basically part of his own body at this point. <laughs> so I love how Mickey's like, hey, Rock, come here a minute. Show this Latin lame brain how to snarl and punch. <laughs> Are you allowed to Mickey say that? Mickey uses, well, he's he throws uh, derogatory slurs at Rocky, too. So based on your ethnicity, yeah. that's what I mean, he's going to go after. Which Old was, people love talking about other people's ethnicities. <laughs> they find it fascinating that. Other people exist on this planet that doesn't look like me? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's weird, I know. Eight billion people, not everyone's white. I know, it's weird. Come here, will you show this black and lame brain how to snarl and punch so Watch the snarl. Yeah, that's it, you see. That's ugly. That's a snarl. Hey, John. I love how he chews his gum there, too. The face he makes. He's and in that great. little moment right there, in that little moment right there, Rocky, the character, of course, Rocky, he's liking this. He's in, mm-hmm. he, His mental health right there is pretty good. He's helping Mickey. He's around. I just, I just got to be around him, Mick. I just got to mm-hmm. be So he's around it, and he's snarling. He punched the bag, and Mickey's using him as a, as a tool. And the, everything right th- in this moment, this is kind of what Rocky envisioned. He can help around the gym. He can be around it. And he's been helpful to Mickey. So he's asking John, of course, asking, <laughs> hey, John, pick up those empty buckets. Or they're, uh, well, you empty those buckets. They're flowing over spit and water and what have you. And and Rocky's going to volunteer to do that. It's still flowing over. What are you doing now? All right, right Johnny, I'll, I'll let him do it. I got it, Rock. Come on. Okay, worry. Rock. So John is the help. <laughs> He's the help around the... the. Mike's not there anymore. So John is the new Mike. Mike is, he's not in this film, is he? At least on no. screen. Mike, I, I'm making a fan theory about okay. Mike. Mike went up to New York to try his hand at uh, Broadway. That's his real passion is acting. Mm. And uh, it didn't work. And eventually he came back. He changed Ruby his Ron. name from Mike to Jimmy to change his identity. I've never worked here yeah, before. Okay. <laughs> With some exactly, sort of witness protection. Exactly. So this is a gross job. Don't get me wrong. He's carrying out the spit buckets, right? Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Now you can take it. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, okay. So he spits in the bucket. Rocky uses his boxing reflexes, dodges out of the way of the spit that comes out of the bucket. And he then he bumps into this beer-guzzling schlub of a man who makes Polly look Yo, like a rock star. What's he doing there? He doesn't belong He's in a He's like one of the here. trainers, I think. Okay. So, okay. Are these guys being antagonistic against Rocky because of the one cartoon? <laughs> Or are they on the payroll of Apollo's team to antagonize him? Led to believe it's because of the cartoon. The reason why I, I, know, I know Kyle's upset with me with the conspiracy. The, it's not a conspiracy. This is how I viewed the film all these years because I guess because I'm watching the film as is, I am so bewildered by their change of attitude and behavior that all it took was a cartoon. Did you really think that it was Apollo's people? Yes. Did you really yes. honestly think yes. that, Ryan? I okay. can't be alone. I can't be alone in this, guys. <laughs> Don't help me out that I'm not alone thinking... These people have been kind of approached by Apollo's people. Look, we want you to bug Rocky, and here's 200 bucks Brian, to bug him. Brian, do you, do you need a minute? Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying they you, infiltrated you, well, the no, gym. No, no, like, do you need a second, Brian? What do you mean? To, to get your tinfoil hat? Oh, you so need to go, <laughs> go grab that? <laughs> I, I, I can't yeah, I'm... I agree that it's a stark, it's a, it's odd, and it's it's noticeable, but I'm shocked to hear that you okay. actually thought it was a yes. possible. I'm shocked that I'm so alone on this. Look, I love a good conspiracy, but I didn't even I, I didn't view this as a conspiracy. We're going to get an email from someone we've never heard of before that's writing style is suspiciously similar to Ryan. <laughs> backing, up, backing up Ryan completely. Uh, I've been Bri- saying he's the Brian is going to call in. I'm a new listener. My name is Brian. <laughs> And by the way, yeah. I just want to say, I think this is a great podcast. Probably better than all the other podcasts, especially Rocky Minute. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. All right. It's because of the cartoon. I'm rewrapping my brain around. Just, it's yeah. just the cartoon. Okay. So he bumps into this guy. Oops. <laughs> hey, can't you think of anything tougher to say than oops? <laughs> Come on, hit that right thing. That's hilarious. Why were they laughing? See, again, conspiracy... My brain was like, it's not that funny. Why are they laughing so hard at that joke? It would have been like, okay. like They laughed like he just told the biggest comedy sketch in the world. I, I, I'm Jim it, it reminds me of junior high. 
people laugh at other people getting bullied. That's to me. That's that. Yeah. This is what junior high was like. The junior high I was at, and I'm sure it's the same as where you guys were at too. People were assholes to each other. Yes, I know. It's like a mob mob mentality, and you want yeah he. People smell the weakness, which Rocky is displaying, I guess, by being meek and not standing mm-hmm. up for himself. Then they just pounce on it. And I have a streak of naivety in me. I know it's there, and not that I'm gullible, but I'm. I can be naive, and sometimes I see things just as they are, or as I think they should be. And so I'm confused by humans' behavior because I'm like, I wouldn't act this way because Ryan wouldn't mm-hmm. act this way. I then am confused why people are acting this way. I think what would really happen in a situation like this. Is everyone to be asking, Rocky, why aren't you going to fight him again? Sure. Like, you have another shot. Like, what's going on? No one's saying that. No one's just exactly. Yeah. It's a flaw in the movie. Look at his level of sweat. Sweating like he's working out. Yeah, that's true. Like, I think it's just hot in the gym, maybe. Why is he wearing a sweatshirt and jeans then? Put on a tank top and shorts like these other, like the fighter. I don't know. It's weird. But Mickey, Mickey's cold. I remember being a teenager watching this scene. If those guys said that to me, if that guy said, can't you think of anything tougher to say than oops? I'd step in that ring, put on some gloves and being like, let's go. That's what Kyle would do? Honestly, I, I got in fights all the time as a teenager. Really? Uh, yeah, I was a pretty violent kid. But that, that's my mentality. If like if you if you mouthed me off like that, I'd be like, okay, we're going to fight. He, if I had Rocky's body and Rocky's fighting skill, and some guy like that said that to me, I'd step up to him and be like, you want to fight? Put Paulie's personality Rocky in that moment. Paulie would have been like, I don't sweat, <laughs> yeah. I don't sweat you. Let's go out right now. Yeah. Rocky's such yeah, a and, gentle soul, though. And that would send a message to everybody in the gym. Yep. And mm-hmm. if you step up to Rocky, then... Something's going to happen to you. Of course, Mickey knows that. He kind of shakes his head. It's kind of like, oh, boy. This is what I was afraid that would happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gazzle's coming in. This is our scene with Gazzo. We're to assume this is the end of the workday. Rocky's gone about his business. Now he's, yeah, he's working like full, full time. He's sweeping shop here. He's sweeping the ring. There's garbage everywhere. These guys are animals. Look at the garbage and litter on the floor. <laughs> like, I know. People littered more back then. <laughs> they must, though. Well, there I, wasn't as sure big of an awareness about the plight of our environment. But awareness enough that Rocky then. has to clean it up. Yeah. Imagine today's gym etiquette, right? I don't go to the gym, but I would imagine you couldn't just dump things on the floor and walk away. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> most gyms have like those, you wipe down your machine or whatever when you're done, which I'm going to point it out, point out something. If you've noticed this, if you've ever been to the gym, the free weight section, which is mostly men. Those guys don't wipe down anything, Mm-mm. ever. Oh well, there's two the types machines, of people in the world, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Italians and other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meaning, like, people that are, what you know where I was probably going, like, yeah. respectful of others. And, yes. yeah. I think it's seen as, as macho that you don't wipe oh, things down, yeah. is what I've noticed mm-hmm. at the gym, is what I'm saying. Paulie goes because, to the gym and goes, I don't sweat the sweat. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way you are. Yo, Brock. Yo, Tony. How you doing? How am I doing? No, how are you doing? Look, I just working in this stuff. What are you doing, huh? Give it to me straight, Rock. Oh, you know. Was... So Rocky explains, well, you know, I'm just sweeping up, making a few bucks. Making a few bucks here and there. You ain't no janitor, Rock. You don't need a job like this. Besides, you're Italian. Now you. <laughs> there we go again. With it. Besides, you're Italian. There is something going on here with Sly and the Italian thing. This is like. Well, that's wealthy. because it's like the Italian mob. I, I know, to- but I get it. But this is the Italian theme. Just keep Italian chicken. Yeah, yeah, Italian yeah. Italian chicken. Yeah. All this stuff. The the lack of Italian and that insult, and then of course him being Italian. I haven't seen so many Italians in one place. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's overloaded. Good defensive of Italians. You're right. God's will say, come back and work for me. This is a fair fair offer. Yeah. Come back and work for me, Rock. Yeah, well, what would I be doing? You mean like, uh, you know, like collecting or something? Well, what else? Look, you come back, you work on the docks. Get some fresh air. It stinks in here. Yeah, you know, Tony, I appreciate the offer, but uh, I can't do that stuff no more. Did you catch that? Are you referring to him with his crucifix? Yeah. 
Yeah, I never took it that way. I just How could think you he's fidgety. Not? This is not even a conspiracy thing. He literally. Holds I just it. think he's fidgety. I do the same thing, like with jewelry. Like yeah. I mess with my jewelry and stuff. Come yeah. on, you guys are leaving. Me I, like I think everything. both of you. Listen, listen. I think both of you have a very plausible. I, I think it could go either way. I, I think he could be referring to the cross. I also think he could fidget. I'm a fidgeter too, so I'm inclined to go that way. But mm-hmm. Ryan, I, I'm going to say this is not conspiracy theory for this one. Thank you. That very well been <laughs> could have been what he's doing. Well, because in this film, we talked about this. In this film, Sly yeah. wrote this film, of course, for whatever reason. He's very religious. Rocky's very religious in this film. Married in the church. Mm-hmm. Gets the father's blessings, all this stuff. Louis says, I agree with Ryan. He deliberately grabbed the crucifix when he said that. Just look to the scene and tell me if he legit, I don't do that stuff no more. Is it just a fidget or is he like, I'm really grabbing this to showcase that? Look, you come back, you work on the docks. Get some fresh air. It stinks in here. You know, Tony, I appreciate the offer, but uh, I can't do that stuff no more. He points to it. It's healthy. You point to it. Well, look. He pointed to it. He pointed. Ugh, that's hard. Again, I think that, it could go either way. I the reason yeah. it doesn't make sense is because he's not all of a sudden become more religious. The in only thing that's has. changed in this film he has. He, goes he to just has a family praise. now. He goes to the he church. He just has praise. a family now. That's the only thing that's different. Uh yeah, it's hard. You see, for me, if I'm Rocky here, I would not take that job. Because there's a high chance you go to jail if you have this job. You break a guy's thumb or do whatever to him, you could easily get locked up. And then what are you going to do? Part two, he found God. Now, I think he loses it later when he gets to part three and four. He realizes he doesn't need God anymore. He's got all that money. But he's like, I am God. God. <laughs> so anyway, so that, we'll leave it to, again, send us an email or tell us on our Twitters or whatever. Uh, did he deliberately touch the cross or was it a fidget? That's a fair question. Tony's got to go. He's looking at his watch. He's busy. He's busy collecting. I gotta go. Take it easy, huh, champ? Yeah. Call him champ. See you, bro. I love this part coming up here. Remember that guy, Rock? Remember that guy, Rock? He points to the Rocky photo. Where they use some shading or something on there. He looks jacked in this photo. I don't know how they got that muscle. Honestly, on. if I'm Rocky, I'd be like, fuck Adrian, I'm gonna go fight. I don't care if I get my face caved in. I'm making good money for my family. I'll do it with not being able to see it on my one eye. That's not Sly's <laughs> body there, though. <laughs> no. That's not the picture, I don't think. He's not even this big in they Rocky showed too. In the beginning. It's like he's not this jacked in Rocky too. He's, he's kind of. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, remember when we reviewed the first film? We were commenting on how Apollo's picture was really detailed and actually looked like him. Rocky's picture didn't really look like him; like it was very poorly done. Mm-hmm. Where in this picture, it shows his face. That is his actual face. Like it's. This is what the picture should have looked like. In the first film, but didn't. Yeah. But look at that six pack. He didn't. Have, this is a Rocky three. <laughs> this is some. I don't yeah. Know how they got? How did they get Rocky three? The Rocky three build. Or back his time. lats or whatever, like just his shoulder, like a. But right. yeah, what's that muscle that's like between the shoulder and the neck? Yeah, I don't know. What He's never is. had muscles like that. No, it's not him. That's not him. Yeah. <laughs> it's a drawing, right? It's like not a photograph. Either way, I think he respects Tony, and so he's, like, hearing it from Tony, like, remember stings. this guy? So I this think, is the yeah. first sting. So this moment yeah. stings more than the cartoon. Mm-hmm. This is what I was saying when he was saying in the first film about how he's going to prove to himself that he's not just some bum from the neighborhood. There is something to be said about proving to it's yourself and not caring what other people think of you. However, I think in life it is hard to go completely not caring what people think of you. I think it's natural to care about what people think. He is less respected now in the community than he was prior to fighting Apollo. It's actually gotten worse. He's like not just a regular bum from the neighborhood. He's someone who's like actively disliked. And and he's lost the respect of people like like Tony, which he had there. He had Tony's respect before, even when Tony was giving him shit about not breaking that guy's thumb. It really wasn't that big of a deal. Tony was still giving him money to go on dates and saying, you know, like you'll you'll get your break or whatever. He he's really worse off than before. Super valid point. Great discussion today, guys. Boy, I always think we're gonna run out of things to talk about and I don't know, we just keep Never. Uh, I'm peeling the onions, it's great. Donald kind of meets us in between Katie and the Moldutu answers. He says it's against my religion, could just be a nice guy justification for I don't want to do that to Gazo. So to not offend him. Yeah. Uh, but he I, didn't recently convert to the Catholicism, is oh what gosh. I'm saying. Like This film, for whatever reason, is so heavy. No, no, no. I know. I, I, I was responding to yeah, who is I, that? Donald said Donald, that. Yeah. 
I hear you, but I deny the justification. <laughs> sure, fair. Obviously, for whatever reason, Rocky II is the religious Rocky film. I don't know why. Yeah, it is. you're Maybe right. Sly in his life was religious at this time. There's very, there's like different kinds of Catholics, of right? It's like Catholic in name only to the hardcore zealot Catholics and yeah. everything in between. So I think you could move between levels, basically, if you want sure. to. If you decide, I'm going to really embrace my childhood religion, you could do that anytime. You can either sure. embrace your childhood religion or embrace children. Depends what side of Catholicism you are. Okay. <laughs> it's not becoming clergy. Come on. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, true or false? Um, we're going to give this one to Kyle. Polly is talking to Rocky when he is punching the heavy bag with his right hand. I'm going to say false because he was talking to Mickey, my answer. See, I said something different, and I said it because I just took it as he was punching the heavy bag with his right hand. That's what I was saying true to. Or no, I think it was his right. I don't know. I have false because I took it the same way as Polly. I thought the question was about who is the person talking to him. Okay. The answer is true. Yeah. So Rocco, I think Rocco listens to the show, and this is all seriousness. So Rocco and or his dad, E.M. King, they both listen to the show. I think they do. Can you just let us know, maybe just clarify the question? Just rewrite the question. I, I hate to say it like because I think we're confused by the scene or the scenario or something because we both. Well, maybe we're misremembering it. Was Polly there too? That's what I mean. There's a scene Kyle? where Polly's in the gym at some point and Mickey had to be there. When Rocky's arms tied, I don't remember him talking to Mickey. Maybe he did, but that's the scene that this is in reference to, and I don't recall now. I put, I'm obviously so you guys wrong could be right, calls, and I could be wrong, but I'm I have the right wrong answer. Maybe I don't know. Okay, he said true. Okay, well, hey, whatever. Yeah, yeah. What is the name of the doctor that tells Rocky and Polly when Adrian got pregnant? Oh, I think he's referring to the coma scene. What is the name of the doctor that tells Rocky and Polly? Yeah, what happened to because there's two to... different doctors, and I specifically recall that's a woman doctor. Yes, and, and I interviewed I, her. I interviewed her. Yes, I thought it started with a B, like Bella C or something like that. So it's not the OBGYN doctor; it's the doctor that gives the bad news about the loss of blood doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. her name is. That's anyone what I guess. I want to guess. Well, I said Bella C, something no. with a B. Kyle, I could. I didn't. Get no, that. I don't know. Doctor Cooper. Of course, it's something basic. Yeah. Okay. Of course, uh, what does Mickey yell after Adrian says win to Rocky? What are we waiting for? Let's go or hold this. This is where it gets confusing. Take it. It's, uh, again, the answer is take us. Yeah, take yeah, Okay, yeah. I actually think that's I incorrect. That. Here's the thing. I When we get to that scene, yes, we will. he's holding a champagne glass yes. and he says, take this. Like, take this from me so I can leave now. I agree with is what you, he Katie. says. So at the very least, we'll give that to everyone because he says, what are you waiting for? The Mickey yeah. mumbles. <laughs> he mumbles I think he so says, badly. take this. I agree. I, take that. But it's almost like this or us. You could almost hear. But you, one of those, yeah. you, know, you ever play those games on Instagram where it says, if you think of the thing, it's what it says. And you think of the other thing, is that's what it says. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Imagine if you're like English is your second language and you have to like interpret shit Mickey <laughs> says. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to Mickey, I don't know. We all know he says, what are you waiting for? Whether it's this or us, I think it's irrelevant. But yes, take us or take this. But it is a weird scene because what is Mickey talking about? I understand what are we waiting for? Let's get training. It would have been, made more sense. What are, you wait, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Let's train. Let's rock this joint. Something. But take us or take this. It doesn't make sense. It, like, I don't know what he's referring. What is the taking? Who's taking what? Who's it's the champagne glass. That's I, why. That's he's, why I agree yeah. with you. But if it's take us, what is he refer? Take us where? Who's yeah. driving? Somebody driving? Yeah. Like, yeah. Who's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Forty-four. True or false? Mickey says, "Get that olive oil out of you." True. It's during the. What do you mean? Do you know? Yeah, it's during the, the training. training yeah, the training uh, montage. Yeah. yeah. I think we caught. I only caught that during my first on the going the distance podcast when I had the captions on again. I never caught that without the captions. So if it wasn't for okay. captions, I would never have heard that. The last question, what are the street singers referred to as? They're the you what? Neighborhood uh, The jukebox? neighborhood jukebox. Yep. Perfect. Okay. I'll nice. tell you something embarrassing. For years, I think I was like 25, I thought it was jute box with a T. J-U-T-E. What, what is a jute box? There's no such thing. Oh. <laughs> it's really juke box. But like I heard it wrong oh. like when I was a kid or something, and I thought that's what it was. Until, like, someone corrected me when I was, like, way too old. <laughs> that is kind of funny. 
that is in the episode. Thank you, everyone. This big one, big supersized episode, which is, kind of makes sense. Uh, what's your scores, guys? Oh, four. I got f- yeah, I got four because I got the true. <laughs> I got lucky. Yeah, out and so true. Three because Bullshit. of the three because of the first. Yeah, first one I got wrong. You got three, Katie. Is that what Correct. you said? Yes. And you guys are probably right, or like I think at the end of the day, no offense to Rocco, he was tan when he did this, bless his little heart, but we're a little confused about the scenario. At the very least, we're confused. So it's hard for us to answer because I don't know what we're answering, if that makes sense. Ryan and Katie, overall, like from questions one to 90, you guys are tied at 76 apiece. Wow. But you're ahead for this season, right, Kyle? So let me just check that. Remember to send us an email, uh, send us, uh, join our Discord, join the Patreon as well. That's right. Next episode, we'll, I guess it'll sort of be, it depends how many visitors or emails we have. We might not, we might, it might just be me, Dom, and Kyle talking about Creed 3, but it's going to be a Creed 3 review show. That's it. So it will not be Rocky 2 discussion. It'll be a Creed 3 review. We're only going to do one episode. It will be the episode. Of course, Katie, when you do come back with us for the next recording, we'll hear your thoughts in real time as well. But send us your voice review, but then we'll, you know, okay. of course, we'll, I would like to touch base with you in person as well. Just get your, I'm, or I might have a response for your review yeah, when you're yeah. in person. Okay. But that will be the Creed 3. Uh, we're tied. Oh, sorry. And I just want to say, yeah, the One More Round podcast will be not doing a whole season on Creed 3, no matter how good or bad it is. It doesn't matter. It's just we're going to do a review episode. It will talk about throughout the, you know, throughout the episodes in the future. But the idea will be that will be the, uh, the review episode. Okay. Ryan and I are tied oh. at 31. And Katie's just behind us at 30. That's kind of a bad okay. score. 31 out of 45 or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we aren't doing that great. Uh, Last five questions is next week. There's been eight of them. So that's 40. Oh, it's just, yeah, like it's 31 out of 40. So you're at like 77% or something. Okay. I thought we did 41 to 45 this episode. Did we miss a week? We must have. Because we're doing the last five questions. We, we started Rocky 2 at 51 to 55, according to my sheet. Okay. We we missed, that. Yeah, we're doing the last five questions next week. That's all I'm saying. So we might have missed five. So it should be 50 by next week. That's okay. If we did, we did. It doesn't matter. It's still just a score. Okay. Thank you so much for everyone watching. Now the episode's over. I didn't hear no bell. I just want to say what